I do. <laughs> and um, and and there's a lot of life to 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 share, but it's not that interesting to always sort of be that generation that has to do the remembering or a certain kind of archiving. And I think that maybe it's more interesting for me, I'm sorry, it actually makes me really upset, but I think it's actually more interesting to figure out what we're doing, like how are we doing it today? And mm. you know, for some of it, it's through touch or it's through exploratory you know, sexual encounters, or through a different kind of reading or writing. But I don't think that um, <coughs> it's about holding up a guard. I don't think it's about being worried that we have a table in front of us. Because I think you listen, and I think I'm listening, and I think that all that that's like, it's almost like bringing the values down a little bit, like not worrying about them and just letting them be. Like, what do we need? Like, we need to hear each other talk. Mm -hmm. I needed you to remind me. Like, we need to allow the, the fragile part to be um, part of our every single day. Not just mm -hmm. this thing that we do because we're so smart to remember these things and that it creates an identity for us. And for those of us who were in this generation that all it was was identity and, you know, create, like we were the leather dykes or we were the people who did it this way or that way. Um, it's actually interesting because this is also the generation that's shaking that shit out. and. And it's very exciting to see generations coming with many, many much and much more interesting ideas about how how to function and also how to fight the fight that is desperate for us to fight. Well, I don't mind having the table between us, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did wear a skirt, so I think <laughs> Shane can't see my leg. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I don't really think of that intergenerational can. divide, really. I mean, I, I mean, obviously, there aren't that many people in my generation left, but I relate very strongly. I, I, I think that. People talk about, you know, different generations of queers, and I think they do it as a way of categorizing and um, sort of addressing subjects, but I don't think that when I read these things that are these distinctions that are made by writers and publications, that they're necessarily very accurate, because I relate very strongly to people who are older than me and to people that are younger than me because of what we share and what mm. we have in common. Mm. And most of the people that I know that are queer, well, obviously, live in New York, but I mean, I know people that live in many other urban settings, and they're intelligent, and they read, and they're interested in our history. And so the conversations aren't lessons <coughs> being taught by me, but they're shared about what we know and what one person doesn't know and another one does. And it's not all about just HIV. I think there's a lot that has, and that the AIDS years, but there are people that are interested in going back before that to, to pick up threads that were dropped out in this life and death necessity. And so I think that, I, I just think that there's a lot of, broader of a conversation, and that the distinctions aren't as um, strong as people are led to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have something to say um, about this subject. Um, I've recently been working with a lot of inner city youth, homeless youth, and, and uh, in a camp, an arts camp I've made, created upstate. And one of the things that I've found is, well, you know, their desire to know the history once they know it, right? So I, I, I was doing a lot of YouTube presentations, especially since Nelson uh, Sullivan's videos have been coming online, and, and of the Pyramid Club and the underground scene in the 80s, and kind of showing the young people this time, which was amazing. And it included everything, not, you know, it was, AIDS was just a part of the whole story, and uh, art, and, and theater, and dance, and, and really the creativity that was bursting forward then. So I, I'm finding that that kind of bridging these gaps and 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 talking with these and YouTube's a great tool right. to just like show this yeah. world because it's all on there. You can Google 1985 Pyramid Club and you get this whole amazing world that we were part of. 
So I kind of like the history telling part of it for myself personally, and 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 it's a whole complete history of not only my experience in in, in this time, but kind of like wow, I was part of this. I'm still here to experience this history and being a part of this. So I'm grateful for all of that. Can I just say, I'm sorry, one thing that um, really t t continues and is so important to me about the Glee Club is that, um, you know, we banned cameras. Mm, yeah. It's just like, no yeah. camera. Because if there was a camera, then people would shy away from their desire or... And so, and I will tell you, I'm sad that we don't have pictures because it, it would be beautiful to share that with everyone now. It would be incredible. But I have to say, there is something about holding on to the, the way of kind of holding people's freedom to be free is something that's also something to value that you can't see. And it's hard to remember, you know, it's very hard to remember, but it's almost like we have to go farther than just the easy access mm -hmm. folks. You know, like we have to go into the photograph and, and maybe go back to the place. And I just think that it is a way to physicalize the experience of this time by just taking like a, 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 path, a walk with somebody or, mm -hmm. or just trying to find out the story like mm -hmm. an, as an oral history. It's a different type than a present, presented one.